This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another Deck History, the series where I look at prominent deck archetypes and cover them from their very beginnings until the present day. As usual, I used a poll to help determine the topic of this video, and Hate Bear managed to beat Splinter Twin this time around. Hate Bear is the name of an aggressive deck that runs creatures that have disruptive effects. Generally, these effects hate on various strategies that your opponent might be using, and the creatures are mostly quite efficient, like 2 mana 2-2s, two and that's where the bear part of the name comes in. There is another similar deck called Death and Taxes, which we will also cover in this video. In fact, we'll be talking more about it than Hate Bear because it has a longer, more detailed history. While the two decks are of course not identical, the core strategy of the decks are very similar, so doing a separate deck history on Death and Taxes would be very repetitive. There are differences between them though. Maybe the biggest and most obvious one is that Hate Bear tends to be a green-white deck and Death and Taxes tends to be a mono-white deck. Another major difference between the two is the formats they are played in, with Legacy the primary format for Death and Taxes, and Modern the primary format for Hate Bear. Let's start with a look at Death and Taxes and Legacy, as that is the older of these two decks. Death and Taxes first showed up in Legacy in 2010. The earliest version to top 8 a major event did so in the hands of Jose Ryan Alicorn at the Legacy Championship. As you can see, the deck is entirely mono-white and features several creatures with decent stats and disruptive effects. Leonin Relic Warder hates on artifacts and enchantments, and Yotun Grunt hates on graveyards, while Phyrexian Revoker lets you turn off activated abilities, and Mother of Runes can provide much-needed protection. Protection is super flexible, and you can use it to protect creatures or make them unblockable. One really important feature of both Death and Taxes and Hate Bear decks is Aether Vial. This is not only effectively giving you a bunch of extra mana, it also allows the deck to deploy its disruptive effects at instant speed. This allows for the deck to do all kinds of stuff, with Flicker Wisp probably the biggest all-star when it comes to being abused with the Vial. You can use it to mess with whatever permanent you want at instant speed. You can also combine it with Mangara of Karandor or Leonin Relic Warder to permanently exile something of your opponents without Mangara or the Warder going anywhere permanently. While the deck can just play out these disruptive threats and win the game that way, the deck tends to ultimately win the game with the help of Stoneforge Mystic, who searches up a powerful piece of equipment that you can put on a creature that you can then protect with Mother of Runes. It's hard for your opponent to come back from that. The deck also sought to disrupt the opponent's mana by utilizing Reshodden Port and Wasteland, giving the deck an additional way to really hate on opposing decks. Many of these elements have remained consistent in the deck over the years, though obviously as new cards are printed and the metagame changes, different hate bears have been included. Let's move forward now to 2012, where the deck received a new card, one that many people probably think of first when they think of hate bear or death and taxes. That card is, of course, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. As we saw, Death and Taxes already didn't run a whole lot of cards that aren't creatures. It doesn't really need to, because its disruptive effects are all stapled to creatures. Thalia was great, as she disrupted just about every single deck in the format. She made life impossible for Storm and slowed down decks like Reanimator for an entire turn, which was usually enough to get the job done. That was really the only change to the deck in 2012, but it was a pretty monumental one. If we look ahead to 2013, we find the first Death and Taxes decks to top 8 a Grand Prix. Two players piloted the deck to top 8 finishes at Grand Prix Strasbourg, with Thomas N. of Oldson winning the entire event. Once again, the deck did not change dramatically, but there were a couple of new additions. One of these was Avon Mind Sensor. The card had actually been around for a while at this point, but it hadn't made it into earlier versions of the deck. The Mind Sensor was a big deal, because it really nerfed any kind of tutor effect, including fetch lands, and there are a plethora of other tutors in Legacy. In fact, if you wanted to flash it in, you could effectively counter a spell in many cases. A Singleton Fiend Hunter also made its way into the deck, and it could work similarly to Mangara of Karandor, in addition to just being a removal spell stapled to a creature. This is pretty much what Death and Taxes looked like from 2013 to 2015, without any major changes save the introduction of Spirit of the Labyrinth, a new hate bear that hated on card draw spells, something especially welcome in Legacy, where blue card draw spells are everywhere, especially Brainstorm. 2016 would see the deck undergo a much larger transformation due to the introduction of a few new cards. 
Two of those new cards were Recruiter of the Guard and Sanctum Prelate. The Recruiter was awesome, because it meant the deck could now go down to singleton copies or two copies of its various hate bears, and use a Recruiter to search up whatever hate bear was ideal for a given situation, and that's very powerful. Sanctum Prelate, meanwhile, could allow you to take your opponent off an entire mana value, and if you had good knowledge of the metagame, that could be pretty backbreaking for your opponent. Another new card for the deck was Thalia Heretic Cathar, who provided an efficient body that also hated on non-basic lands. The two Thalias combined with Rishadenport and Wasteland to really make the opponent's life difficult when it came to their mana. Speaking of versions of the deck that really make mana difficult for people, in 2017 a red variant of the deck emerged. This version of the deck went really hard on that mana denial aspect, adding Magus of the Moon and Vryn Wingmare to the mix. Red being part of the deck didn't become a permanent thing, but it is worth noting that in metagames where non-basic lands are relied upon heavily, the deck can be modified to go a little harder in that direction. 2020 would see the next large-scale transformation of Death and Taxes decks. One reason for this was Yorion Sky Nomad. Yurion is a card that has impacted pretty much all formats at this point, and that's because starting off the game with such a powerful card effectively in your opening hand is great, especially because the deck has plenty of Enter the Battlefield abilities. Playing extra cards in your deck did mean your deck could be less consistent to some extent, but because the deck utilized tutors like Stoneforge Mystic and Recruiter of the Guard, the downside was minimized. Not long after this deck top-aided the Magic Online Legacy Challenge, Companions got a significant downgrade. It turned out that they were way too powerful, and errata had to be issued for all of them. Now you had to pay 3 mana to put a companion into your hand before you could ever cast it, instead of just being able to cast it from outside the game for its mana cost. This obviously made the payoff for going with a bigger deck much worse, but some versions of Death and Taxes still utilize Yorion to this day. Later in 2020, another new card made a big difference for Death and Taxes, and that card was Skyclave Apparition. It could perform a similar role to that of Mangara of Karandor from the earlier versions of the deck, but because it exiled the thing right away and could hit non-land permanents, it tended to be a lot better. Sure, it couldn't hit more expensive things, but curves in Legacy are very low, making the Apparition pretty nice in most matchups. Just like with Mangara, if you vialed in a Flicker Wisp in response to the Apparition trigger, your opponent would just lose their permanent and never get a token. Let's move forward now to the most recent Death in Taxes deck to top 8 a major Legacy event when this video was made. This deck top 8 a Legacy challenge just a couple of weeks ago in October of 2021. As you can see, it's still going the Yorion route. Most of the cards in the deck are things we've touched on before with the exception of Solitude, a card printed earlier this year in Modern Horizons 2. It gave the deck an additional effect to potentially abuse with Flicker Wisp, and it could be free if you were willing to evoke it. So that's pretty much it for Death and Taxes and Legacy. We'll move now to taking a look at Hate Bear decks in Modern. As we'll see, they aren't drastically different from what we've already covered, but they are different enough that they do deserve to have a different name. Hate Bear decks have been around in Modern since 2013, with the deck's first major top 8 coming in 2014. As I said at the beginning of the video, one big difference is that Hate Bear decks tend to be pretty much always green-white. As you can see though, the deck uses Aether Vial and runs a whole bunch of hate bears we've already seen, but some of them are new, like Scavenging Ooze, a creature who hates on the graveyard while getting larger, and Linvala, Keeper of Silence, who shuts down creatures with activated abilities. The deck also couldn't utilize Stoneforge Mystic because it was banned in Modern. This leads to Modern Hate Bear being a little more aggressive than its legacy counterpart, as it can't rely on suiting up a creature and winning the mid-game quite as effectively. As a result, Restoration Angel plays a major role in the deck. This is because she can be used to help creatures dodge removal, in addition to blinking creatures like Blade Splicer and Flicker Wisp for additional value. Modern Hate Bear decks also don't have access to the same amount of mana denial that Legacy Death and Taxes decks do, but it is still a component of the deck. In particular, Hate Bear looks to combine Ghost Quarter with Avon Mind Sensor or Leon and Arbiter, which often turn Ghost Quarter into a Strip Mine. Those two cards can also be used to make Path to Exile into a better Swords to Plowshares. As we move closer to the modern day, Hate Bear decks begin to look more and more different from Legacy Death and Taxes, mostly because the green part of the deck becomes increasingly pronounced. Craig Wesco piloted this deck to a top 8 finish at Grand Prix Pittsburgh in 2015, and it features many more green cards. This includes Scavenging Ooze, which we've already seen, but it also includes Voice of Resurgence, a card that hated on your opponent interacting on your turn because it would crank out tokens, and it also features Loxodon Smiter, Wiltleaf Liege, and Kasali Pride Mage. Both the Smiter and the Liege are great at hating on effects that make you discard a card, like Liliana of the Veil, and Kasali Pride Mage is great for hating on enchantments and artifacts. 
The deck didn't change a whole lot in subsequent years until 2019, when Stoneforge Mystic got unbanned in Modern. If we take a look at a deck that top aided a Magic Online Modern Championship earlier this year, you can see that it bears a pretty big resemblance to what we saw in Legacy decks from the same year. The deck features Yorion as a companion and runs the whole Stoneforge Mystic package. Most of the hate bears it runs are things we've seen time and time again, with Archon of Emyria the only real exception to this. It gave the deck a card that hated on any deck that likes casting a lot of spells, and it hated on non-basic lands, which is a pretty nice thing to have on a 3-mana 2-3 flyer. Those are the main versions of Death and Taxes and Hate Bear, appearing in Legacy and Modern, respectively. But as I noted at the beginning, there are decks bearing one of these names that have showed up in other formats over the years, though never with the kind of consistency that we saw in Modern or Legacy, so we won't be spending that much time on them. For example, Vintage also has a Hate Bear deck. Obviously, Vintage has a bigger card pool, and that results in a significantly different deck. In 2015, Victor Trejador piloted his Abzan Hate Bear deck to a top 8 finish at the UK Vintage Championship. So far, we haven't seen any Hate Bear deck running black, but that's what we have here. It gave the deck access to Dark Confidant, a powerful card-drawing engine, and Deathrite Shaman, a card that hates on graveyards and gives you value while it does. As you can see, one of the biggest differences between the decks we've covered so far and Vintage Hate Bear is that Vintage Hate Bear doesn't use Aether Vial at all. That has been a fixture as a four of in every other deck we've covered, but not this one. Over the years, other Hate Bear decks have enjoyed some spotty success in Vintage. This is what Hate Bear decks looked like earlier this year, and as you can see, it became a blue-white deck. Blue was added to the deck primarily because of Hull Breacher, which has an incredibly powerful hate effect that gives you treasure anytime an opponent tries to draw extra cards. Decks with taxes in the name have also shown up some in Modern, though in most cases it seems to be used interchangeably with Hate Bear, as you can see from Tate Donovan's Green Taxes deck. So that's the history of Death and Taxes and Hate Bear decks. Both have been around for almost a decade, and both are still relevant decks in their respective formats. It turns out having really efficient creatures that disrupt opposing strategies is a very viable strategy in both Modern and Legacy. And as we've recently seen, Thalia Guardian of Thraben is getting a reprint in Innistrad Crimson Vow, and that may help lead to the emergence of more competitive Hate Bear type decks in Pioneer or Standard, but we'll just have to see. That does it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. In doing so, you also make it more likely I continue to make these. If you want to make sure you catch future deck histories, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on past deck histories, and there are more than 20 of them, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.